Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,630. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to share with you today a guest calling in from Monaco, one of the most beautiful places on the planet, Christian Phillips. And Christian, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm, I am. I certainly am. All right. I have a feeling that you're always ready for a fun ride because you've been living in the car world forever. Before I do a proper introduction and we get into some of my questions I always like to ask my guests this. What's one little thing that perhaps most people don't know about you? Oh, my. I mean, this is, um, this is a, a surprise <laughs> question to me. And I, I'm, I wasn't ready to answer that one, actually. Um, m- maybe to hear me on your show. Uh. <laughs> well, you know, you've been around for a long time. You've been doing a lot of very interesting things. Your life is a treasure trove of automotive fun. So uh, I guess being on Cars Yeah! is something unique for you and a first time. I'll remind uh, our listeners today that Christian was a guest on the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast I was doing with Keith Martin. He was guest number 26. So if you'd like to hear another side of Christian talk about buying, selling, and holding special cars, it was a really great show. One of my favorite shows on Buy, Sell, Hold. You can find it on the Cars Yeah! website and listen Well, listen, Christian, we're going to do a proper introduction here, and then I'm going to jump into the questions. Christian Philipson is an international consultant specializing in classic cars and automotive design. He's a regularly invited to judge at concours from around the world, including Pebble Beach. He's a founding member of the Peninsula Classics Best of the Best Awards, a charter member of the International Chief Judge Advisory Group, and has for many years chaired the jury's for the Louis Vuitton Classic Awards, and for Michelin's Challenge Babendum Design Awards. His list of clients includes such names as Christie's, Ferrari, Paninfarina, Renault, and many others. Christian started his career in assisting Jacques Swatters, the Belgian Ferrari importer of Hakori Francorchamps fame, and is the former publisher, the respected annual Automobile Yearly, which is a wonderful, wonderful publication, I should say. By the way, Christian just launched a new business titled Lead, an online auction website, which he's going to tell us much more about. We'll be back in just a moment to talk with Christian, but first a word from our valued sponsors that make Cars Yeah! possible. So keep your seatbelt on. We'll be right back. The best way to protect your vehicles is with a Covercraft custom fit car cover. I know because I've been using their covers on my vehicles since 1975. Plus, they offer a multitude of options depending on your situation. Indoor covers include Form Fit, Dust Stop, the Oh So Soft Fleece Satin, and their very unique View Shield, a cover that protects while allowing you to see your favorite vehicle while the cover's on your car. Amazing. Need a cover that will protect your ride outside? Their incredible options allow you to choose from Weather Shield, Sumbrella, Weather Shield HD, Block It, Reflect, Carhartt, Evolution, Nova, and Weather Shield HP. So many options. Whether you're looking for rain protection, UV shielding from the sun's damaging rays, breathability, dust protection, snow protection, even ding protection, and protection from those paint-destroying bird droppings, they've got you covered. Their soft-touch covers are safe for your paint, and the custom fit keeps them from blowing off. If you live in a windy area, get the Covercraft Gust Guards. They're a must-have if your car sits outside in windy conditions. Worried about theft? They have cable locks, too, with built-in grommets that keep your cover safely on your vehicle. Their website makes ordering fast and easy, and their talented customer service department will walk you through any ordering questions. They can customize a cover for almost any vehicle on the planet. And I've got a deal for you. If you use the code yeah 120 at covercraft.com you'll get 10 percent off your covercraft order that's right so go to covercraft.com use the code yeah y-e-a-h 120 at checkout and get 10 percent off on me mark here at cars yeah covercraft they've got you covered 
American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. Yeah, the one I call my orange crush. When it came time to renew my policy, my carrier jacked my rates up, even though I'd been with them for years. I'd never made a claim. No tickets, nothing. What's with that? Adios. So I started shopping around and kept hearing about American Collectors Insurance from fellow automotive enthusiasts, friends, and folks in the car industry. I did some investigating and learned that American Collectors Insurance have been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I'm not a price shopper when it comes to insurance. I want to be able to sleep at night. I also want agreed value protection for my special ride. With an agreed valued policy from American Collectors Insurance, I'll be paid what my vehicle's full agreed value is. A number I set with the insurer at the start of the policy so I know there will be no surprises about what my car's value is, should something terrible happen. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI-YEAH, that's 866 866- 224-9324 and protect the ones you love. Make sure you tell them Mark sent you. You'll be glad you did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Christian, we are back. And as we uh, start this journey that I'll call your life around cars, I always like to ask my guests for a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that has great meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning a little bit here on Cars Yeah. So, Christian, I know you love to drive, so grab the wheel. Well, Mark, first of all, thank you so much for your very kind introduction. Whilst I was listening to you, I actually uh, had a, was like a a, a movie (laughs) going on in front of my eyes and, um, and, uh, it uh, reminded me of such great moments uh, du- during all those years. So, so indeed, yes, it was. Um, it was very kind of you to mention all these. Uh, You're welcome. All these activities from the beginning of my life with Jack Waters until what I'm doing now with uh, with Le Bolide. I remember having read once uh, a, a sentence like, "You know, he succeeded because he didn't know it was impossible." Mm. <laughs> and um, I, I very much like that sentence. If um, a, another way of telling it is actually a little story, kind of funny story that uh, that I once was told by American friends. It was it's it happened during an economic crisis, and um, and car sales were down everywhere. But there was somewhere in in Michigan a dealer that was still going strong. And so the manufacturer concerned decided to sell to send an intern to the to that uh, dealer and uh, to find out what what happened and why that dealership was still performing whilst all the others went uh, were down. And after a couple of days, the intern came back and wrote his report. And in his report was simply written: "The idiot is unaware there is an economic crisis." <laughs> and. <laughs> I love that. So, I, I, I had to laugh, but actually, I mean, there is some depth in that uh, in that kind of joke, be, because um, again, you, nobody should should believe things are impossible. And even when everything is tough and hard, there are ways of finding solutions and um, and, and being positive. So, uh, I, I guess that is something that uh, that very often I remember. You know, this is very appropriate for what we're going through this very unprecedented year. And I have some friends of mine that have a bit of that same attitude. And I've talked to them and I say, well, aren't you worried about all the strife and all the things going on? And they've just said, I don't focus on those things. Mm -hmm. I only focus on the things that make me happy and make me successful. And it's a wonderful attribute just like that car dealer, he just decided I'm not going to focus on what's wrong. I'm going to focus on how I can make things right. Uh, I, I think that's fantastic. Let me ask you this, Christian, because I think this is something more people would find to make their lives a little bit happier, especially this year. How do you do that when you think about your life and how you focus on things that are more positive and ignore the negative? What are some things that you do that might help some listeners that are tuning in today to help them get over times that are troubling. 
Uh, I'm not sure I can uh, I can bring much to that debate. I think it's a kind of attitude. You use that word, and I think it's a kind of of attitude towards life. You know, you you can see the glass half empty, and you can see the glass half full. I have that tendency of seeing the the glass always half full, at least half full. And whenever there is an obstacle somewhere, I, I, I try to find ways around it or to use it actually as an opportunity to um, to, to to be inventive and uh, and find something new that will um, that, that will that will bring that will bring more joy and uh, and hopefully some returns as well. I am so happy you used that idea of a glass half full. I had a guest on the show last week, Carlos Saloum who is a motivational coach. He helps race car drivers, professional athletes, and so forth. And he's writing a new book called The Glass is Full and a Half. And his whole premise of helping people achieve their goals is to not even think about the full, the glass half full, but it's full and a half. It's even beyond that level, but it's all about your attitude and so forth. So uh, I'm glad that you you shared that with us today. Uh, I didn't know such glasses existed, actually. But, uh, <laughs> If, if I could buy one and uh, and pour some wine in it, I'd love that. Well, I tell you what, you'll have to listen to my talk with Carlos, and he will help you learn how to make sure that glass is full and a half. <laughs> in fact, his book is coming out next month, and he's asked me to to write a little thing about one of the chapters, which is titled "Inspiration." Since my mantra here at Cars yeah, is inspiring automotive enthusiasts, so I'm looking forward to doing that. When I, when I learn that little secret, I'm going to share that with you, Christian. Uh, so both you and I can fill our glasses full and a half with a nice wine for sure. Please do, please do. I will. Well, I would love for you to share more about Lubalead because this is a very interesting new business that you've gotten into. And what I love about you, Christian, is you're a rather mature man like me. You've been around for a while. And some people would say at this point in our lives, we should be throttling back and maybe pulling over and resting a little bit, but not you. You've decided to start a new business. So tell us all about this exciting new venture for yourself. Well, first of all, yes, indeed, I'm from 1944. So that gives you an, an, an idea of how old uh, I am. And um, I, have, I have worked, as you mentioned in the opening uh, conversation, I have worked as a design consultant for different manufacturers and I have observed that these people who were from my generation retired between 62 and 65 years of age. Now, some of them started a new company, a little company, and became consultants, and others started mowing their, their lawns and their gardens. And you know, a few years later, you really see the difference between the two. And uh, I, I want to be, I want to remain active because I want my brains to work and. Um, and, and and not to fade away as I've seen a few of my friends or, or former colleagues uh, do. So that that's that's the motivation actually. I don't want to fade away, and I want my brains to uh, to be to be active. There's another reason also. You know, I want to pass on some of what I have learned during my life to the next generation. And um, at Le Bolid, we do we do employ a team of young engineers, of young salespeople, and uh, we, that, that is a very strong motivation as well. I, I remember when, uh, when I applied for my first job with Jack Waters, actually, I sent him a letter telling him I wanted to work for him. Within a few days, I got a reply inviting me to, uh, to meet with him, and after a couple of minutes, he said, you know, you look like a nice guy. I don't know what you're going to do for me. But if you like, you can start next Monday. Mm. Uh, you, <laughs> I'm not sure if things like that could, uh, are still happening today. It's probably more tough for, for the young people out of university. And so I'm delighted to, have, to give to these younger people an opportunity as well. Now, often you very kindly asked me about the bullied. I, I haven't invented anything, actually. You know, I'm... I love America, and I used to spend time in America always as much as I can. There, there were periods during which I, I traveled to New York or California up to almost 12 times, 12 times a, a year, so almost monthly. 
and I always, I always enjoyed it. But also, I always learned something during my trips in America because I find there's such energy of um, over there. There's such freedom to create. Um, I, I always came back fully energized. And um, I did observe bring a trailer during uh, du during a few stays, earlier stays, and I thought it was um, I thought it was a clever idea actually, and uh, th that's what inspired us. So with, with with that team of young engineers, we built up our own software, and uh, we developed Labolite, which is basically a platform putting together vendors and buyers of cars of special interest, and we follow an auction process. Mm -hmm. It's it's very simple, very easy. So does it operate very much like a bring a trailer for those listeners here in the States that are familiar with that? It, it does indeed. We Obviously, I mean, they, they cover mostly the American area. We cover European, the uh, continental European area. The, um, the, the site is in French language right now. We're working on, um, on translations in foreign languages because one big advantage, of, of course, for you in America is that you have that single language covering um, over 300 million inhabitants. Yes. We have to play with, uh, I don't know how many, but at least 10 different languages. So we're working on that. But yes, I mean, it's basically the uh, a similar process, indeed. Very cool. Would you help us, uh, our non-French-speaking listeners here today, what does Lubolid mean? And I'll remind our listeners, it's spelled L-E-B-O-L-I-D-E, Lubolid. Lubolid, indeed. And you pronounce it like a real Frenchman. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> Lubolid is actually a, a, a fast little car. Ah, okay. I love it. It inspired our motto, which is the high-performance uh, auction website. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I can't wait till it's uh, in English because my high school French has gotten very weak over the years. I'm afraid, Christian, but you're very kind in the way that you uh, uh, helped me with that uh, pronunciation of Lubolid. I always like to ask my guests to share a big challenge that they have faced in their life, uh, maybe even a failure. And this is more about the lesson learned so that you can move forward in a positive way. So take us on a little journey here, a time in your life when you were challenged a bit, and tell us how that experience helped you to gain even more momentum in your life, in your business, in your career. Uh, I'll reply to you in a second. I just want to add that as far as the bolide is concerned, uh, nobody should expect, I would say, as the the, the the, the massive amount of cars that is uh, featured on uh, Bring a Trailer every day. We have just launched our website, so we are, we are, we are way behind Bring a Trailer, but we, we are getting there. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, you know, when you think about Randy Nunnenberg, when he started, I think he was doing like 10 cars uh, a month or something like that. One, you know, it was very small. So this momentum takes time, but I have no doubt you're going to catch up. So. Throttle up, as <laughs> all they, as they say. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes. Now to to answer your question, uh, Mark, I must I must have a selective memory because quite <laughs> honestly I don't remember a, any of these challenging times. <laughs> or you you told me that you would ask me that question, so it's not for lack of searching. But I guess my my brain is not wired that way, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, if if I have to give an answer, well, perhaps I would say that the part of my life that was least successful is, is my private life, which has been rather chaotic. And, um, and and I'm not sure that I have a lesson that I have a lesson to give in that respect. Um, though I I'm making progress, though uh, I, <laughs> I I've reached a point where I'm kind of um, how would I say settling down. But um, it's taken me many, many, many years. And when I, when I observe all these happy couples who have been married for 30, 40, 50 years, you know, I'm, 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 still, I'm still way behind them and I'll probably never catch up with most of them. Well, Christian, I've learned a lot in the last six years listening to over 1,600 people. And so one of the big things I've learned is you got to keep trying. Now, if I had known you when we were both younger... 
I've been married 35 years next month. I could have told you the secret to relationships my grandfather taught me because my grandparents were married for 72 years. And that is this. You just do everything she tells you to do. Now, <laughs> my, my grandfather said that to me when I was getting married and my grandmother looked at him and said, don't lie to the boy, Bill. And so that's where we went from there. But I will say that life is a work in progress and you always keep trying. And I have no doubt uh, you'll find success there as well. Never fear, because there's always room for improvement, as I've learned from my many inspiring there guests. There definitely is on, on my side, although, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going through a very happy period right now. So it's, uh, it, it sounds good. But looking back, that is probably where I could improve or could have improved most. Well, there you go. Well, I'm very happy to hear things are going very well for you today. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. And when we come back, I'm going to dive into your personal history with cars. Because having talked to you before, and you're such a delight to chat with, you definitely have a history with a lot of interesting cars. So everybody, sit tight, keep your seatbelts on, give our sponsors a little love, a little attention, because they're the reason we're here every day, and we will be right back. So what do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 podiums, multiple Daytona wins, and a win at Le Mans? Well, if you're racer and the racers group team owner, Kevin Buckler, you start Adobe Road Winery. It's located in Petaluma, California, and he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series, four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, wrapped in a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today, I'm going to talk about Shift. This wine was awarded 93 points by Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. It's balanced and spicy with dark blueberries and a cigar aroma. The unique bottle shape features a vintage-inspired metal gated shift back with carbon fiber, and the cork is topped with a five-speed shift knob. That's right. There's going to be some battles at the dinner table on who gets to keep the cork after this bottle has been enjoyed. The Racing Series is a delicious gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life. And I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARSYA, yeah, all one word in caps, at checkout, you get $10 off any purchase of the wines from the racing series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly right at your door. Use the code CARSYA yeah at checkout and get $10 off your purchase from the racing series today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARSYA yeah today. <coughs> Cheers! My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH. For buy, sell, hold, that's code BSH, and you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right, $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yow for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. Let's step away from the conversation and talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yow, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through auto-related events, car shows, and drives. Among these nonprofits is Tech Force Foundation, a great organization dedicated to solving the technician shortage that threatens the transportation industry today. By providing career development resources and increasing awareness and enthusiasm for the tech profession, Tech Force is bringing bright young students into the auto, 
diesel, aviation, marine, motorcycle, motorsports, and restoration worlds. To date, they've awarded more than $10 million in scholarships and grants to tech students. And in times like these, I don't have to tell you how essential those techs are, keeping our delivery and emergency vehicles running and keeping America rolling. To learn more about Tech Force or to make a donation to this cause, visit www.techforce.org. You'll be glad you did. All right, Christian, we are back, and I would love for you to share a story with me that really instigated this passion that you have for cars, that pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were destined to be a lifelong car guy. Well, it all started in our garage at home when I was a, a young boy. It's, uh, and obviously it started with my father. It's, uh, but in a kind of unusual way, probably. My, my father wanted to become a surgeon, a medical surgeon. And since we had a family business, which had nothing to do with uh, medicines or medical uh, issues, uh, my father was forced to take over the, that business. It was um, a shipping agency. And in, since he could not operate people, what he did during the weekend, he operated his car. <laughs> and I, I was the assistant, and I passed on the tools, and I cranked the engine when he was adjusting the valves. I, 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 that, that was the kind of stuff that I did, and that's what started my interest in cars. He didn't have a passion for cars, actually. He had a passion for operating, mm. and, um, and I developed a, a, a true passion for cars. We also had the family doctor. Uh, who uh, who loved cars, was a big fan of Sterling Moss, by the way, uh, who was such a fantastic character. Yes. And um, he's the first one. He owned a Jaguar XK150, and he was the first one who took me to races. He, he, he came to our house and said, I'm, um, I, I'm inviting, I'm, I'm taking Christian for a little day uh, at the track. And, that's, uh, and that fascinated me, and that's how it all started. And this is why after the army, I, I wrote that letter to Jack Swartz telling him I wanted to work for him. Well, that's pretty special that your family had a friend that would take you to the races in a beautiful car like that. I mean, just crawling into one of those and heading to the races uh, would start the petrol running through your bloodstream <laughs> and then getting to the races would be fantastic. Let's talk about your first really special car. Now, this could be the first car you had, or it could be the first car that you saved up for that you really, really wanted. What was that vehicle? And maybe share a memory or two about that ride. My, my very first car was an MGTC in very poor condition. My second car was an MGTC in even worse condition. And so I tried, <laughs> I, I tried to make one good car out of the two um, and, and actually, uh, for the record, I just bought another TC with a supercharger, this one, and, and I think it's my seventh TC. <clears throat> wow. So th there is some some nostalgia catching up with me there. <laughs> but um, that's probably not the, I would say, it's certainly not a, a, a very important moment. I, I guess the, the first car that matters is that um, Ferrari 166 Millimilia Barchetta that I once saw for sale in a little garage in Antwerp. And um, at the time I was working for Jack's Waters, I didn't have any money and couldn't afford to buy it myself. The, the asking price was about $2,400 at the time. Oh my gosh. So I immediately told Jack's Waters, you know, th th there is this 166 millimeter. I just saw, you should buy it. It's a piece of history. It was actually the first Ferrari that Olivier Jean de Bien uh, had driven in uh, racing. And Jack wow. Waters told me, you know, I'm not interested in buying old cars. I, I have to finance the, the, the cars we are using in our racing team this year, next year. I don't have any money to spend on a car like that, on an old Ferrari. And I kept insisting, trying to convince him how important a car like that was. So after about half an hour or so of discussion, he, he told me, well, and he probably simply wanted to get rid of me. He <laughs> said, go and Go and buy it, but don't spend more than two thousand dollars. And uh, and if you can have it for less, we'll do it. And he gave me a check. He signed it, but didn't fill in the amount. And I, I went back to that little garage and didn't dare offer less than a, a, a two thousand four hundred dollars. 
So I told uh, two thousand dollars, you know, the equivalent of one hundred thousand Belgian, yeah. and um, and I. I offered 100,000, was kicked out of the garage, and the guy said, you know, I don't need tie kickers of your age, and uh, you know, just just leave me in peace. So I, I took an initiative and went back and said, why don't we split the difference? And so I I filled in the check with 110 Belgian francs or $2,200 and drove the Ferrari right away to the garage. I mean, arriving, of course, with a big grin on my face. But um, as as I had as had to be expected, the first question was when I returned, you know, how much did you pay? Uh-oh. And I had to say two thousand two hundred dollars, <laughs> and that that was a very tough moment. I must say, I thought I would be fired on the spot. Yeah. But the nice the, the nice continuation of that story is that Jack Swartz kept that car until he passed away, and of course, in the meantime, I mean, the value of the car had gone up. Tremendously, I mean, thousands of times, of yes, course. Yes. And um, and whenever we met, because we have uh, after I left him, we uh, and started a different, I mean, or continued my career elsewhere. I mean, we always remained very close and in very good terms. And uh, whenever we met, and there were friends around at the table, he said, "Christian, you know, tell the story of the one six 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 millimeter." It was it, it was great fun. You know, it's a wonderful story. Where is that car living today? That car actually is in England and was purchased by Clive Beecham, uh-huh. who, uh, who is treating that car very, uh, the, in a very nice way, showing her. Usually, I do. I, I, I use a neutral for car. I mean, that's how I, I was. Uh, I was told when I learned English, I said car was neutral. But for that one, I, I think we can use, we can use she and um, and her. He, he treats her very well. Calls her Nona. That car today is blue. Is that correct? That car was sold new to Gianni Agnelli and was painted originally in in, in two shades: one one of blue and one of green. It's um, which were the Agnelli family colors, and that's uh, that's the colors. Those are the colors that the car is painted in today. It's a stunning, stunning, beautiful color on that vehicle. We, you see so many of those in red, of course, and other sporting colors, but it brings an elegance to that car that is just, uh, it's, it's delicious. I love it. You, you're so right. You're so right, Mark. It's, uh, it, it's a wonderful car. Absolutely. Well, I'll bet you nobody's ever asked you this. I'm going to crawl into your head a little bit here, Christian. I'm going to be that uh, maybe that not the surgeon your father wanted to be, but a psychiatrist, perhaps. <laughs> if you if you woke up tomorrow and you had manifest as a car, not what you want to be, but how you believe your attributes would be defined as a vehicle, what would Christian Philipson be and why? Well, you, you would probably tell me that I, have a, that I have a very high opinion of myself. <laughs> That's okay, <laughs> Christian. That's okay. <laughs> so um, I, I'm tiptoeing here, but but I have an answer for you. Actually, that car would be a Lotus 25. Ooh. It's, uh, I think that car is absolutely fabulous. And furthermore, it was driven to many successes by the, the hero of my younger years, who was Jimmy Clark. Yes, and uh, I, I think it was a brilliant car. It was the first uh, racing monocoque. It was. Um, it had a 1500 uh, engine with uh, in V8 uh, shape. Fabulous car, and driven in such a, a smooth and elegant way by um, by, by Jimmy Clark. Th- that that would probably be the car that I'd like to be. You know, I love that vehicle. Maybe that's why I like you so much, Christian. It's such a special vehicle. And I remember when I was a little boy, I loved to build model cars. And that car was one of the first formula car models I ever built as a little boy. Mostly I was building U.S. model cars by Ravel and so forth. And that car, the thing that I remember stood out to me were the the yellow wobbly wheels, of course, Mm -hmm. which when I started vintage racing 15 plus years ago, I raced a Lotus 18, which uh, I believe Jimmy raced at one point in the beginning of his career and had those same yellow wobbly wheels that brought that wonderful memory back Mm -hmm. to me of that car. But uh, the great Jimmy Clark and the Lotus 25. Nicely answered, Christian. I think that's perfect. 
perfect for you. Do, do you still own that that Lotus 18 model? You, no, I sold. I'll tell you what. I sold that car to a gentleman named Mark Green with an E on the end in England. So the car was shipped to England uh, some years ago, probably. 12 years ago, 10 years ago. And sadly, he was seriously injured racing another one of his Lotuses. I think at Goodwood, his car flipped and he was burned very badly. Oh. And I don't know where the car is now, but I will tell you this. I took such great care of that car. It was restored beautifully. I raced it quite for quite many years. And when I shipped it to him, he called me and he said, Mark, this is the nicest race car I ever bought. Most of the time I buy race cars and they're way over represented. represented. And when I get them, I'm very disappointed because the uh, seller has kind of fibbed a little bit on the quality. But he said, this is like a show car. But I took very good care of that car. And I really loved racing that car. It was not fast, of course, but it was quite delightful. And uh, I tried to channel, channel the best I could of Jimmy Clark when I got into that car. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you did. I mean, these 18s were great cars as well. They simply were not as revolutionary as, as the 25. Well, of course. It was so yeah. sleek. It's, 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 you, you, nothing to change. I mean, it's perfection from, from front to rear. Well, the 18 was a little bit more like a brick going down the road. The 25 was much, much more sleek and beautiful, way more powerful, of course. Uh, that little engine that was in that 18, plus it had a Renault Dolphin gearbox that was very delicate. Uh, with the well, you're yeah, speaking of a Formula Junior. Yes. Junior, yes, Junior, yes. And yes, so, yes. Uh, yeah, with the shift, the shifter on the left, which always befuddled me a bit, and the H pattern mm -hmm. was backwards. So I had to be very mm -hmm. careful going from third to fourth because my instincts wanted to go from down and over, which would have put me into second, which would have exploded everything. Uh, but I will say I never did that. Christian, we are entering what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick blips of that Lotus 25 throttle. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes in life? Well, people tell I'm a good organizer. I'm, I make things happen. Hmm. Um, so I guess that's a short answer. I like it. Very cool. How about if I could wave a magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? I may surprise you here. I'd like to have dinner with the inventor of the wheel. <laughs> that is the most unique answer out of 1,630 people. That is wonderful. I love it. I mean, no, no wheel, no car. Yes, yes. So let me ask you this. It'd be interesting to know what language this person would speak, other than Uggs and Uzz. Uh, what would you ask yeah. this gentleman? If we assume it's a man, maybe it was a woman. Yes, indeed. It could be a woman. How... He or she came up with the idea. What kind of observation did uh, did they make? I mean, how, and um, you know, how did they build the first one? Was it plain? Was it hollow? Did it have spokes? I mean, yeah, um, I love it. That is the best answer I've heard in six years. Christian. But I want. I probably want to ask him to cook to, to, to cook <laughs> dinner. Huh? No, he, he'd walk out own, and yes, my own food. club something over the head and drag it in and throw it on the fireplace. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. What a wonderful answer to that question. How about the best automotive advice someone else has ever offered you when it comes to old cars? Um, I, I, I'd like to pick a sentence from my good friend Bruce Meyer who says, never lift. <laughs> yes, I love that guy. He's been a guest here on the show. Never lift, mm -hmm. indeed. Yes. What a slogan. I love ne it. Never lift. So I'm, I'm co copying and pasting here. There you go. Uh, how about a great resource? Now, uh, Luba Lead, which we mentioned earlier, is a great resource for you listeners to go for buying cars uh, in Europe. Um, again, he's going to be uh, expanding that with time, so it's going to be growing. So keep going back, and I'll put a link to that. But is there another go-to resource, something that you find yourself going to quite often? Now, this could be a person in your life. This could be a website, an app, a podcast, something that is a go-to for you that you think our listeners would enjoy and benefit from. The, the, the first, the first website, um, and, and I do spend, I do spend quite some time in front of my computer, actually. Um, the, the first website I can think of is the website of Sports Car Market. Um, I, I think they do a great job, and that Platinum database they have available with uh, with all auction results and comments on cars that were sold. I think it's invaluable. Yes, um, absolutely. So a Sports Car Market, is, SCM definitely belongs there. Another, another website that I keep 
uh, reading with the ten- with pleasure satisfaction is veloce. Ah. It's um, and uh, a regular contributor is Graham Gold. Graham Gold, and who lives in the south of France, actually. So uh, we we do meet occasionally and uh, and have lunch together. And of course, remember a few um, illustrious uh, sportsmen like Jim Clark, whom uh, Graham happened to know very well. So, but there are plenty of other stories, uh, very often involving European history. So Veloce is um, is always entertaining reading. And there's another one which you probably, most of you haven't heard of, which is um, a German language uh, website called Zwischengas. Um, Zwischengas means that little blip, you know, when um, on the throttle, when you downshift uh, um, and going from, from, for instance, between fourth, from fourth gear to third or from third to, uh, to second, you have that little blip. Yes. A little blip there. Yeah. That's Trish, Trish and Gus, and they do very accurate reports on whatever is happening on the uh, classic car scene or collector's car scene, auction reports, testing, events reports. They're very accurate and very complete, like uh, German Swiss can be. Wonderful, wonderful resources. How do you spell that, Switzenglash? <laughs> <laughs> it's Swiss and Gus. And um, that, that would be Z W I S C H E N G A S dot com. Switzenglas, gosh, gosh, boy, my German is about as weak as my French. <laughs> uh, well, I'll make sure I put a link to that with the correct spelling, uh, and you can say it any way you'd like, better than me, I assume. I'll write it down for you, Mark. I'll, I'll I've got it, it. I've got it, and I'll also put links to Veloce and, of course, uh, our friend Keith Martin at Sports Car Market and their Platinum Database on Christian's show notes page. Hey, Christian, is there a book that you've read that you think our listeners would really enjoy? I'll, I'll start mentioning a, a book I look forward to reading, and it's called A Life Restoring and Racing History, Historic Cars by Tony Merrick. Um, it, the, the book has just been released, actually, and um, I, I ordered it a, a couple of days ago. Very much look forward to it because Tony Merrick restored some fantastic cars, also enjoyed driving them and racing them and um, do, doing quite well. The book that I recently read with uh, great pleasure was Colin Crabbe's Thrill of the Chase. It's, yes. uh, it's a big book telling, telling stories uh, about all the cars that he found in such remote places as Argentina, Cuba, or the, uh, the Eastern Bloc when the Iron Wall, the Iron Curtain was still, uh, was still up. Yes. I mean, a larger than life character. Great adventures, and um, and he certainly saved some fantastic cars. Colin was a past guest here on mine, and I loved my talk with him because he shared some incredible stories from that book, and I love that book as well. It is amazing. I mean, you sit back and you think, oh my gosh, this guy has done some amazing things with his life. The stories of getting through Checkpoint Charlie in the middle of the night and uh, going to Cuba and finding cars. We did that together, actually. We did that, we did that together. At the time I was working, I was working for Michelin in Germany. I was based in, in Hamburg. Oh my gosh. And uh, one day Colin showed up and said, Christian, you know, you speak German, I need you. So we, we did a trip to Eastern Germany together. And um, and came back with a uh, an auto union supercharger. Oh my gosh! How cool is that? It, 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 in its in its original box, actually, it was uh, it was a un- unique moment. Uh, no kidding! Wow! Well, we we do have a few memories together. Well, I think but, so. Uh, but Colin, I, I was just uh, I mean I was just uh, there to assist him. I mean all the all the credit goes to him. And uh, that's just one of very many stories. And what a great character he is. Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, I'll remind our listeners, you can go back and listen to Colin Crabb's story um, interview on the Cars yeah! website, where all my past 1,600 and now 30 guests are listed, including this wonderful talk we're having today with Christian and the book, uh, the new book by Tony Merrick. I look forward to that one as well. All right, Christian, we're up to the checkered flag here. And this last question can be a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you... 
a collector car today. Anything in the world, it doesn't matter who owns it, I'm going to park it in your garage and it's going to be yours. But there's a couple rules to this game since I'm writing the check. You can't sell it to buy a bunch more MGTCs with. That little trick's off the table. Uh, you have to drive it and enjoy it. I'm not one for garage queens here at Cars Yeah, but here's the kicker. It's the only one collector car you can have. So you can either keep one of those MGs, and I don't have to spend a dime on you today, but I would much rather buy you something very special for your garage. So, Christian, what can I buy you today? Well, Mark, I mean, I thank you for that. Are you, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure? Are you ready for it? <laughs> I, okay, I, let me get the big checkbook out. I've got the big cars yet yeah. checkbook because I've written a lot of checks on this show. So give it to me, fella. Because <laughs> actually, you know, I'll give you a choice. You know, you can, you, I'll give you a choice okay. between two okay. cars. Okay. But bo- both of them b- belong to, um, to factory museums. Okay. And so I guess that, you know, you probably want. Um, it won't be enough to buy the car. Probably you probably have to buy the company as well if you want to. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, that's no problem. Want to offer. But um, in the preview of Tony Merrick's book, I, I saw an amazing photograph where side by side you had the 8C 2900 Alfa Romeo with that streamlined body, and um, and the 300 SLR Udenhout Coupe, the Mercedes Benz. And, you know, either of these uh, two cars will do, uh, Mark. Oh, wow. Okay. You're going to make it hard for me today, not only in price, but also... Both cars have a sophisticated engineering. Both cars have um, a, a racing DNA. Uh, both cars have um, fantastic lines. Yes. And um, to me, they are absolutely irresistible. And I would say if I if I had to organize I would say a, a dream concourse, either or would be best of show. Yes, absolutely. Well, let me think here for a minute. As I know you, um, boy, this is a tough one. I, I want to lean towards the 300 because... I know of that era car, such a wonderful car to drive and, and mm-hmm. it can go anywhere with it, but you can with the Alpha as well. But you know what? A man of your sophistication, a man of your knowledge, a man of your life that you've lived, I'm going to buy you the 8C. I think that's the car <laughs> for you. How's that sound? Sounds good. Sounds, Sounds good. good. You made my day. Okay. I can, made, yeah. I can hear the smile on your face. So uh, yeah, I think that would make oh. anybody's day, wouldn't it? <laughs> From ear to ear. Yes, no doubt. No doubt. A 39.8C 2900. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful, beautiful car. Christian, you have taken me on a wonderful ride today. This has been great to reconnect with you. I want to thank you for sharing your incredible life with the Cars Yow listeners. Before I let you go, would you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you drive off into the sunset there, leaving the city of Monaco for the hills in that beautiful Alpha HC. Well, first of all, Mark, let me thank you uh, for, for this moment we, we shared. I did enjoy it very much. You're welcome. And um, I, as I said in the beginning, you know, it, it brought back some great moments of my, of my life. And answering your question, I will go back to the beginning of your interview as well. Uh, I, I think that um, the, the, the parting thought is probably don't think things are impossible. Just just go for them. Have a positive attitude. If you want to do something, just go for it. Don't think, don't think it won't work. Do there it. you go. There's some inspiration for a very unprecedented year. Don't think, just do. Just like Christian Philipson, and you will have a spectacular life. And the best way for people to learn more about Lubalid would be the website, correct? It would, absolutely. Every, everything's written on there, and it's very easy. Uh, I, I think most people will probably understand it even in French. Yes, absolutely. And don't worry, English is coming. So for uh, us who are yep. a little bit weak in our high school French, uh, you're going to have that on its way. So I'll make sure I put a link to that. Lubelide, L-E-B-O-L-I-D-E dot com is coming. Also, he's got a great Facebook page, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. Everything is there. I'll put links to all of those on Christian's show notes page. Christian, merci for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your experiences with the Cars Yow listeners. Until you and I talk again, my friend, or we see each other on a lawn one day when Concours come back. I'll see you down the road. Looking forward to that, Mark. Many thanks again. Many thanks. <laughs> it's been wonderful. 
If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting, but what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars Yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!